example in A. Uh, so in this case the 5 is E. Uh, and this 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 riff is basically based off this uh, E7 shape here. So from that E note that's the 1, the major 3rd, the flat 7, and then the 1 again doubled on the B string. Normally you would uh, you would, you would play that chord like this. But in this case, we only need the top three notes. That's basically the shape that our hand is gonna uh, is gonna take up when we begin to play this lick. So in this case, that's your first finger on the uh, on the E, the fifth fret on the B string. You got your second finger taking up the sixth string, uh, sorry, the sixth fret on the uh, D string, and then your your third finger will be on the seventh fret of the G string. So that way, you get the top three notes of that shape. So the first thing you want to do is is uh, pluck the highest note in that shape. So uh, fifth fret on the B string, play that, bend up, then play through the chord. So so. Then once you've hit that top note again, release that bend. So you get. Now you can stop there. Um, in one of the one of the solo examples that I'm, I've put in, that's what Clarence does. He starts off with the he starts off the uh, your solo my mind solo by going. can do we're going back to where we were so you've got is once you've released that bend you can bend up again and then add your pinky onto the seventh fret and then you're kind of going up the major scale back to the uh, back to the A so and then that's really pulling you back towards So yeah, that's the first lick. The second lick we'll be dealing with today doesn't actually use the B bender. Um, I think maybe it could be. I, I guess I haven't worked it out yet. Like once if I've raised the string set up. Um, but it's it's this. So in this example, our, our tonic, our home chord, is D. So we're in D major. So our fifth in this case is the A7. And back to D. So for the, in this example, uh, once we're in, if we're in D, then we can use the open A string. So what we're doing is we're hitting that open A. We're hitting the flat seven of the A there on the fifth string of the, uh, the D string, and then we plant in both your second and your third finger down on the G string uh, on the sixth and seventh fret. Sorry, my camera's messing up a little bit. So there, we, we're using our second finger there just for support for the for the bend coming up. So um, so. And we're, we're I'm chicken picking here, so I'm, I'm plucking the A string, and then using these two fingers um, on the on the D string and on the G string. So I'm going, so I'm plucking that, which is kind of a, a seven sus four type thing, and then I'm bending this up, bending the G string up a whole tone, then I'm releasing it. Then I'm just letting my third finger come off and I'll, I'll pick it again. And then 
that's when you get that, that really strong A7 coming in. So you've got the 1, the flat 7 and the 3, which is uh, the building blocks of a dominant 7 basically. A flat 7 that, uh, that is, by the way. Not a major 7. So that's what you get. Now in any other case, if we're on this same string set, then you won't be able to uh, use the open A in a different key. So what you then have to do is you'd have to bar uh, bar um, the same fret that the flat 7 is positioned on there, this, this fret. Basically, basically uh, the fret where the root note of the 5 and the 1 is. So I wasn't going to use the open A, I'd have to put my first finger there to get that. Which is harder because you've uh, you got to keep that ringing out and that ringing out with your first finger while you bend. So if we're in G, for example, and but then we go to five. And there you go. So that's basically the gist of it. Two licks here. Uh, we're using the V bender again, of course. Um, and this is the well, the first one of these. Uh, this one is qu is, du is quoted directly from Clarence. So. Well, the way that basically works is if you imagine on whatever five chord you're on. So let let's say we're in D again here, for the sake of the example that we did. We're in D, so our five is is the A7 again. So what you got to basically think is um, the the minor pentatonic on the five chord. So if you think of that, if you catch these two notes, so the flat seven and the one on the A7. And how we're going to start off this lick is by pre-bending the B. So this is a kind of tricky one, uh, just to for your brain to wrap it wrap itself around to begin with. Uh, but it, it's going to involve some contrary motion. Now contrary motion is where two notes move in different directions. So it's obviously that suggests a double stop or a triple stop maybe. Uh, and in this case, it's a double stop. Now, a double stop, if you don't know, it's just two notes being played at once. So, these two in this case. And uh, what's going to happen is the high E is going to move up like that, and the B string is going to move down. So, it's going to go. Now, you'll notice there that I've had to be careful about what I'm doing with the B bender because I'm I'm only releasing it halfway. Now, this takes a bit of uh, a bit of time to get used to just getting it right. Um, that. Even I muck it up sometimes when I'm, when I'm trying to do it, as you'll, you'll probably hear eventually uh, in this video. Um, so that those two things are going to happen at the same time. That, and that. And then what you get when you play them together is... Which is a very, quite an alien sound normally. You don't really hear that uh, from a guitar very often. That kind of, it's very, very pedal steel kind of sound, you know, with the... Um, as you can imagine, the pedals would be going going wild at that point, and you'd be getting that contrary motion here. See, again, I've messed up there myself. Um, so that would work, yeah, over an A7. Let's take you back to D. Now, the the other lick is basically just this the same the same thing just uh, with the the notes you're playing on the high E moved up so instead of you start there and then you get 
And that really gives an even more, even, even stronger of a dominant sound on the A7. Because you are going directly to a, that uh, 7 shape there. Which is like a, a D7 shape from the cage system over the A. We're ending up with those two. Just desperately want to go back to the D. And that's kind of it really, so uh, just, it takes a while to get used to releasing the the, um, the bender like halfway and then and then another halfway to finish them off so and then but uh, once you got it, it it makes a very cool sound um, and it's it, it really pricks people's ears up I know for sure it did it did with mine for sure when I heard it I was like what has he done there um, so yeah it's just a that's just a really nice lick that I found uh, Clarence did mm, hope you like it Now the last lick here, uh, again, will be based in D, so your 5 is A7 once again. And uh, this, for this riff, basically what you've got to be thinking of, of is the, uh, the D shape. Classic D shape, imagine you just play a normal D. Luckily we are in D again here. I'll go through an example later on when we're in a different key just to just for the sake of showing you uh, it's somewhere else. But you, you basically got to set yourself up and imagine in your head what's the one and the D shape on the one chord where that where where is that? So in this case we're playing in we're in D so the D shape is where it normally is. There. And what we're going to do is we're going to imagine we're playing a um like a sus, a sus four on the D. So normally you might add that pinky, like that. And we're going to start the riff with that. So you don't need to, no use using all your fingers uh, for that. You can you can just play it like that. So first finger on the fit, second fret of the uh, G string, and then you kind of another Chuck Berry thing, double stop on that third fret with your uh, second and third finger. And once you hit that. You're going to bend up, and then you're going to bend down again, and then you're going to let your second finger go. So you get that. And then, and then you can just get ready to resolve to that D shape. Um, so if we were in A, for example, You would you would think right the D shape on the A is here, so you're gonna start it like that again, that kind of sus four thing. You're gonna bend up, and release the bend, release that second finger, and then you back and then you back to A, back to the one. Of it really, it's just a, it's a very kind of sweet little thing. Um, it works pretty well if you're doing it staccato. So yeah, that's about it from me, guys. Uh, hopefully you've you've enjoyed the licks, you found the video useful, and all of that. Um, I'm going to keep these these Clarence style videos coming just because. Well, it's locked down here in the UK at the minute, so I haven't got really anything better to do, really, um, than just sit and, and transcribe stuff other than just uni work. But I'm I'm perfectly happy happy doing that, and I've got I got a lot of stuff to show you guys um, as well. So yeah, there's there's more on the way, um, but it's really just about experimenting, really. Uh, aside from just listening and uh, referencing, you know, wh whichever players you like. For me, it's Clarence at the minute mostly, but. A lot of it, apart from that, is just knowing chord tones and especially on like you know dominant seventh chords, just having a lot of shapes under your hands, and then delving into those shapes and seeing if there's anywhere where you can you can kind of implement the B bender really, and uh, just just spice it up a bit and 
and come up with new things because that's that's the joy of it, isn't it? Really coming up with new stuff that you that you like and that works and that sounds really cool. Um, and yeah, that's about it, really. Um, let me know if there's anything particularly you want to see, any solos you want me to transcribe. Um, and yeah, hope you've enjoyed. See you soon.